الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة I praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward each and every one of you brothers here on this panel tonight and all of those who tuned in to listen and to benefit May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and reward each and every one of you tremendously for your efforts, for that which you, which you have presented, and for having good thoughts of me and honoring me with the invitation to participate in this auspicious bithnilahi ta'ala occasion. This hadith is tremendous. And it is a very timely hadith that each and every one of us, bithnilahi ta'ala, should pay very close attention to. It's a hadith that has a direct impact upon our daily lives, especially in the time in which we live in, especially under the circumstances in which we find ourselves in these days, and especially with that which is going on today in the world and on the global stage. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as my noble brothers have pointed out, he mentioned as it comes in a narration, قبل الساعة, before the hour, before the hour, before the day of judgment, before the end of this world. Sinuna خدعة, there will be years of deception. Inside of another رواية وفي الرواية سيأتي على الناس سنوات خدعات that they will come upon human beings years of deception so we find in one hadith that they will come before the hour deceptive years and another years of deception as our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pointed out in this time the one who was truthful will be considered and deemed a liar to the end of the narration as my beloved brothers Ta'ala, has pointed out this is an indication and it shows you that there will be a switch there will be a flip in the condition of human beings those things that at one time were unfathomable will become commonplace. And from those things, and from the, the flip of situations, is as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said in the end of the hadith, and that is as he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, وَيَنْطِقُ فِيهِنَّ and during those times, during those years of deception, during those deceptive years, the ruwayy bidwa, they will speak. They will speak during those times. The Sahaba, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum, they ask, and it was said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qila, ya Rasulullah, it was said, O Messenger of Allah, wa man ruwayy bidwa, and what is the Ruwaybida? And I want us to pay very close attention because there comes a few narrations where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he explained who are the Ruwaybida and he gave to them various descriptions that are very important for us to take notice to and to know. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this narration that's collected and could be found in Sahih al Jami'. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, قال المرء 
التافه يتكلموا في أمر العامة that there will be an individual who is التافي the ulama they explain that the meaning of tafi ay al haqir an individual who is a lowly person an individual who they are despised lowly low life type of person that they will speak in affairs that are connected to and related to the general masses of the people Perhaps so we can better understand what is and who are the Ruwai Bidwa. The ulama, they mention, call an ulama, a Ruwai Bidwa, men haythu lugha, that the Ruwai Bidwa as relates to the language. Tasghir ar then it is the small or the minusculing version of the word rabida wal rabida huwa ra'i al rabid and the rabida it is the one who is a shepherd they are a shepherd of rabida and this is why they take the name rabida because they are herders of rabida wal rabida huwa al ghanim and rabida it means cattle like sheep, goats, so on and so forth. Now, this is the Rabidah. But there is a benefit that can be taken in the sense and from the standpoint that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he referred to them using the minusculing version of the word. So it's not Rabidah, but these are in fact Ruwaybidah. So even as among shepherds, these individuals are nothing to write home about that even amongst shepherds, they are not that which have even prestige amongst their peer group. These are These are the lowest of the shepherds. These are the lowest of the herders of Rabidah. So this here gives you an indication that these are individuals who they are out on the outlines of society in the sense of their field and area of responsibility is over the likes of these animals is over the likes of their cattle, these sheep, these goats, so on and so forth. And even amongst those, they are not even the primo at the top of their particular fields, but they are even nobodies amongst herders of sheep. They are nobodies amongst the herders of goats. They are nobodies amongst the herders of livestock, so on and so forth. This is the way Bidah. Such an individual, bila shakwa bila raib, has no place in the affairs of speaking about the general affairs that will have an impact on the general masses of the people. But yet in these final times, the situation will be switched so much so that even the likes of these individuals will speak about the affairs that are connected to the general masses of the people. Now keep in mind that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he described them as being tafih. Not only are they ruwaybidah, not only are they the lowest from the herders of the sheep and the animals and the livestock and so on and so forth, but they, the Prophet Sallallahu so that there is no ambiguity, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in further explaining, he mentioned that they are an individual who is tafi, an individual who is haqir, an individual who is lowly, who is despicable, a low life type of individual. This is who the ruwaybidah are and this is an aspect and a description from the likes of these individuals. وَقَالَ Imam الشَّاطِبِي قَالَ Imam الشَّاطِبِي He mentioned, he said, قَالُوا هُوَ الرَّجُلُ التَّافَ That it is an individual who is lowly, الحقير. It is an individual who is lowly, he is despicable. يَنْطِقُوا فِي الْأُمُورِ الْعَامَ And they speak about general masses, or they speak about the general affairs. They speak about the general affairs. كأنه ليس بأهل أن يتكلم في الأمور العامة فيتكلم. An individual who obviously it is as such as they are not from those who have right to speak in such affairs and yet they are speaking about general affairs that are related to the general masses of the people. 
an individual who was totally outside of their scope, an individual totally outside of their depth, an individual who was totally beyond their level, speaking in ways and speaking about things in which they have no right to discuss and to speak about with the vigor or to speak about, period. Waqila, bida, ya Rasulullah. And it was said, O Messenger of Allah, who is the Ruwai Bida? Who are the Ruwai Bida? To which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, Al Maru at Tafi, Yatakalamu fi Amr al Am. It is the individual who is lowly, despicable, despised, wretched type of individual. And they speak about the general masses of the affair. So this is a description. This is a angle from the meanings of Ruwai Bida. Naam. So for those who have the opportunity, Naam, then I want you to write this down in your notes, inshallah, ta'ala, that the Ruwai Bida, one of their characteristics is that they are low lives, lowly and despicable and wretched individuals. Naam. So they are lowly, despicable and wretched individuals speaking about general affairs of the people. But in the riwayah, there comes a riwayah in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah ta'ala, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, As-safih, yatakallamu fi amr al-am, that it is an individual who has weak intelligence. It's an individual who's intellectually challenged. It's an individual who is dumb, who is stupid, and they speak about the general affairs. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described the Ruwai Bida as being a lowly, wretched individual. But at the same time, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained that the, that the Ruwai Bida is an individual of low intelligence, is an individual who is stupid. Naam? So it's a lowly, wretched, stupid individual who is speaking about the general mass of, of the affairs. And it's important that we know and understand that because an individual being lowly and wretched does not negate the fact of their intellectual capacity. They can be lowly and wretched and very intelligent. Naam? They can be lowly and wretched, but have something from intelligence. But the Prophet ﷺ described them as being dumb, dim-witted, stupid. Naam? Now, I want you to reflect upon this. Even if an individual has something from the standpoint of what we will call intelligence and smarts, any individual who does not know their place and who speak outside of their depth, then you will say about that individual that they are dull-witted. Because they're speaking about affairs that are clearly and obviously beyond their scope. So these are individuals who do not have the ability to even assess their own level and such stay in it. But they are individuals who not only do they have the general affairs twisted and they don't see them properly, but they are individuals who they have not even assessed themselves properly so as to know their level, so as to know their lane, so that they may stay in their lane and on their level. So, of course, this is an individual, Bila Shakku Bila Raib, who is not intelligent, who's not smart. Naam. But for riwaya, and inside of another narration, Qila Ya Rasulullah, wa marruwai bidha. In another narration, it was said, O Messenger of Allah, who are the ruwai bidha? Faqala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al-fuwaisiq, yatakallamu fi amri al-am. That they are the sinful criminal individuals. They are individuals who are given to criminality and they speak about the general affairs. That they are individuals who are giving over to criminality, sinful criminal individuals, individuals who are not religiously upright themselves and they're speaking about general affairs. And this narration can be found in the Sicilia of Sahiha. By Imam Al Albani, Rahimullah Ta'ala. So now we have another aspect of who are the Ruwai Bidah. Naam, an individual who is lowly, an individual who is not intelligent, an individual who is given over to criminality. This, these are the Ruwai Bidah. 
Now, when one hears the likes of these narrations, one says to themselves, no way does it even sound plausible that anyone of any type of intelligence will give their ear to such an individual, will even listen and pay attention to such an individual who is lowly, who is stupid, and who is criminal and who is a criminal. You wouldn't even give any credence to anything they have to say. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's explaining to us here in his hadith that towards the end of time, near to the day of judgment, affairs will be flipped. They won't be the same. Affairs will be flipped. There comes yani, some lines of poetry from a poet where he mentioned, he says, إِذَا نَتَقَ الْحَدِيدِ وَسَادَ الْعَبِيدِ That when the metal, when metal speaks, and when the lowly ones become the leaders, man, because all of these are indications that there's a change in situation because traditionally metal does not speak. Anything that is metal, there is no voice coming from it, right? Those who are lowly, they are not the rulers. Now, those who are lowly, they are not the rulers. And then at the end of the poem, it says, Then wait for the hour. When you see these things happening like this, where things are being flipped, things are being changed, things that were traditionally and historically went one way now are being flipped on their heads, then wait for the hour. So we find here in his narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's giving us and he's uh, teaching us that the one who is truthful, he will be deemed as a liar. The one who was a liar, he will be deemed as being truthful. So on and so forth to the end of the hadith was showing us that the times will be flipped upon their heads. The situations they will be changed upon their heads. So yes, those who have intelligence historically, anyone who was lowly, anyone who was wretched, anyone who was stupid, anyone who was given to criminality, you wouldn't give them the time of day. They will be given no credence whatsoever in any which way, shape, or form. But towards the end of time, things will be flipped upon their heads so much that not only will the likes of these individuals be given the opportunity and the stage and the platform to speak about general affairs, but people will actually listen to them people will actually give their ear over to them. People may actually agree with their opinions, so on and so forth. This is something that is very dangerous. And it's something that unfortunately we are all faced with. This is something that unfortunately we live in a time that we are being tested with. The likes of these individuals, we are being tested with them. I'll leave you a little bit to reflect upon perhaps maybe who am I talking about and what group and which group am I alluding to? I'll leave you to reflect and to think about that briefly. The ulama, they mention that inside of this narration, فَجَاءَ وَصْفُ فِي الْحَدِيثِ بِالْفِسْقِ That there has come the description of the ruway bida in this hadith that they are individuals who are criminals. They are given to criminality. They are given to sin and to transgression. But it's not sin and transgression and criminality that is something that is private and remains within themselves, but is that which has become known. They are open criminals. Now, their fist is be has become known. Their criminality, their crime, their sins, their transgression is that has done in a public setting has become known. It is known to the people. Now, and traditionally, wahua. And this is historically and traditionally is that which will prevent an individual from speaking about general affairs. The main fact that they are criminal, then this makes them ineligible to speak about general affairs. They're not eligible to speak about general affairs. How can you speak about general affairs that affect the general masses of the people, affairs that, may, that, that, that potentially have to do with yani, order, that have to do with individuals controlling themselves, that have to do with a, with a society being in control when you obviously are an individual who is incapable of controlling themselves. So now who are you to speak about the general masses and the affairs of the people? Now I want you to reflect upon this. And these are individuals who Sheikh Nasr, rahimahullah ta'ala, he used to mention. The likes of individuals who will speak ill about the, the rulers of the Muslims. The likes of individuals who have 
a lot of opinions about the rulers of the Muslims. This one is not ruling by the book of Allah. Who does not rule by the book of Allah, then these individuals, they are the kuffar. And you hear them saying this, saying this, saying this, saying this. But the Shaykh, he says, but you find that these individuals themselves, when look over that in which they have authority over, they themselves are not ruling by the book of Allah. So this individual who, for example, his wife is under his care, under his realm of authority, you find she doesn't even even cover properly she does not cover in the manner in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded her to cover but yet he wants to speak about the ruler not running the country by what Allah has revealed when this individual cannot even run his house by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed reflect on the individuals who have so much to say about the Muslim rulers speaking ill of them which is contrary to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that is well known and clear with Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. The likes of these individuals who their face, their faces are devoid of any type of hair. Their face is devoid from the beard in which they have been commanded to grow. What's the kulliha? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and leave alone the beards. Let the beard grow. Be different from the Jew and the Christian. Let the beard grow and shave your mustache. But you find this individual can't even rule their face by the book of Allah. But yet they fought the rulers for not ruling a whole country by the book of Allah. You see? You see the likes of this? You see the likes? of this criminality, an individual who does not command his women folk to dress properly, an individual who cannot obey Allah as relates to their facial hair, and yet they have the nerve to try to speak about the general affair. This is just an example. This is just an example and an illustration ta'ala. food for thought. Food for thought. Naam. And also as it has come يعني, آخر, There comes another narration With the Prophet وسلم, He mentioned about this ruaybidah That no attention Should be given to them You should pay the, they, they, the individuals who ordinarily are paid no mind No mind is paid to them No attention, no credence is given to them and this is from that the fact that he's paid no attention this is that which is linked and connected to his criminality because he's a criminal thus he's not given credence he's not paid any attention to so the people in actuality have no need for him the people in actuality have no need for him the prophet he said as it comes in the hadith that's collected by At-Tabarani the Prophet ﷺ, he said, وَيَنْطِقُ فِيهَا الرَّوَيْبِضَ And in these years, the رَوَيْبِضَ, they will speak. وَقِيلَ وَمَا الرَّوَيْبِضَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And it was said, and who are the رَوَيْبِضَ, O Messenger of Allah? قَالَ مَنْ لَا يُعْبَهَ لَهُ The Prophet ﷺ, he said, he is the one who no attention is paid to him. He is the one who no one pays him any mind. No one pays him any attention. Why? Let's go over some of his characteristics. Because the Ruwey Bidwa is lowly, wretched, low life individual. An individual who is given to criminality. An individual who is stupid. An individual who is, 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 is not paid attention to. Aslan. All of this lends to the fact that no attention is paid to him. When they speak, an individual who is of low intelligence, speaking about things that are clearly beyond their depth, you pay them no mind. Because it is obvious he doesn't know what he's talking about. It's obvious she does not know what she is talking about. So no attention, no credence is given to anything they may have to say. But in the end of time, it will be switched. It will be flipped. So that the the roe bida, they would be given an ear. They will be given an ear. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he described the roe bida with a number. Of characteristics. Naam. For Ruwe Bida, who were Rajul, a taf. The Ruwe Bida is a man who was a low life, haqir, lowly, wretched individual. Yantipu, 
في الامور العامه and he speak about the general masses of the affairs وهو من لا يقبل له and he is one who no attention is to be paid to him وهو فويسق and he is one who is a criminal يتكلم في امر العام and he speak about the general affairs وهو صفي and he is an individual who is stupid he is a dim-witted dumb individual وهو العاجز he is a individual who is incapable الذي ربض عن معالي الامور he is an individual who he is held back hold themselves back from the high affairs وقاعدة عن طلبها and they hold themselves back for seeking out these affairs and likewise you find this is the case of the likes of these individuals is that they are individuals who in actuality don't even have all of the information they don't even have all of the facts about those things in which they speak about they are individuals who they don't even know about those matters and those topics in which they try to tackle handle and discuss although they speak about them as if they are an authority but when their their situation is examined it is found that their ignorance is compounded compounded ignorance so that which we were reflecting on stewing over and pondering on what are some real life examples of these ruay bidwa who are some examples of these individuals who the yani are clearly described here in this hadith because bila shakku bila raib we have reached a time where these individuals wa'iyadu billah they have become plentiful there are many of these individuals here in the time in which we live in as sheikh khalid uthman al-masri hafizahullah ta'ala he mentions the ruay bidha ruay bidha net the ruay bidha of the net the ruay bidha that you find prevalent upon the internet now i want to remind people and i want to caution them that this deen this 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 knowledge excuse me the ilm this ilm is deen this knowledge it is yani is it is deen so look to who you take your knowledge from we have come to a time where people are very laxadaisical they will go online and they will scroll through youtube and listen to any person that comes up on youtube that the title seems interesting and they listen to them they'll just randomly click upon this one click upon that one don't know anything about this one nor anything about that one so on and so forth and you find that there are many individuals with this modern technology that reach the general masses of the people speaking about affairs that are connected to the general masses of the people when they are from the most ignorant of the people naam now listen a lot of times and this is what makes the matter even more sad is that these are individuals who they will tell you in their introduction before getting into whatever it is they're speaking about they will say i am not a scholar i am not a student of knowledge however when it comes to such and such i say this or my opinion is this subhanallah stop wait a minute as soon as the person has acknowledged they are not a scholar they are not a student of knowledge that should be the end of it there is no however there is no but as soon as you have acknowledged that you are not a scholar nor a student of knowledge then you cannot proceed to go on to speak about the religion this is allah ta'ala's deen when it comes to the affairs of the dunya if i were to open up my address by saying listen i am not a mechanic I am not even one who studies about cars and 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 about the mechanics of cars. However, when it comes to your problem, I'm going to tell you it's the radiator or I think it's the engine or I think it's this or I think it's that. You're not going to pay me any mind because you're going to say but you're not a mechanic. You don't even study yani about auto uh, yani automotive uh, uh mechanic design or whatever, right? Or another example if you're a person you're sick and i come in i tell you i'm not a doctor i'm not a nurse i'm not a i'm not a medical practitioner i don't have i don't know nothing about medicine however i think the way you cough it sound like and are you going to are you going to accept my my diagnosis of that are you going to say yes this is what i feel if i tell you, you know what i think you need to go to the pharmacy and you need to get this and you need to take that and so on and so forth you're going to look at me crazy what are you talking about i'm not going to put medicine in my body based upon 
what you say my condition is because you have acknowledged you're not a doctor you don't know anything about medicine so why would i have the right to speak about medicine you will say you do not have the right to speak about medicine but i agree i don't have the right to speak about medicine about an individual's car now i agree i do not have the right to offer my opinion of what's wrong with your cars but i don't know anything about fixing cars so how come when it comes to allah ta'ala's deen these common sense measures are thrown out the window. A person tells us up front, not a scholar, not a student of knowledge, khalas, why are, we, why are we continuing to listen? Why are we continuing to give an ear to the likes of this individual? Why are we give any credence to what this person is saying? And then if you read the comments of some of these things and people are agreeing, yes, brother, right on, brother, you speak in the haq, brother, so on and so forth. Yes, yeah, subhanAllah, how flip is this affair? This is sad. One of the poets, he says, and I'll end upon this as food for thought. He mentions, he says, this poetry, Woman entum hatta yakulu ma'indu. The the poet he said they came to us people from the Bedouins, people from the Bedouins. Now, people who live out in the middle of the desert, away from a town, away from civilization. Now they coming into the in, the city and they want to talk about things and call shots and give their opinion. They said they come to us people from the desert, a people, yani kaum tafakahu. People who claim that they have fiqh, they claim to have understanding, they claim to have ilm. But what's the reality? But however, they didn't have understanding of the religion, not before they came and not after they reached us. Before they got here, they know about the religion. And after they got here, they know about the religion. They say this thing with us is not permissible. The poet, he said, well, man, entum, hatta yakunu lakum endu. But who are you who have anything of credit to even have to say? Who are you? Another, another version of the poetry says, well, man, entum, hatta yakunu ma endu. And who are you to the fact that you think you have the right to say what you got with you? You are no one. You don't have any fiqh of the deen, not before, not after. And then you're going to tell us what, what is and what isn't right. What's from the deen, what's not from the deen, what's permissible, what's not permissible, what's halal, what's haram, what's the right way, what's the wrong way. And this is what we say to the likes of these individuals who put on their Facebook live, who put on the YouTube live, who go on Instagram live, and who yani, want to talk about the deen, want to talk about the deen. And I'll just give you something to think about, inshallah ta'ala. You'll find that the people of knowledge they have a way, the students of knowledge, they have a way in which they address the people. They have a way in which they talk to the people. Knowledge is noble and you do not yani, uh, um, disgrace knowledge by your mannerism and the way in which you present to teach people. Reflect on the Hadith of Jibreel. The Hadith of Jibreel with Jibreel alayhi salam, salam was with Jibreel alayhi salam. He came to the Prophet alayhi salam, in the form of a student, but also as a teacher showing us the adab and the manner in which he was dressed. He was in fine clothes, his hair exceedingly black, his clothes exceedingly white. He sat and he had adab. He sat, put his knees on the knees of the Prophet, I sell him his hands upon his thighs. He sat in adab. This is the manner of, this, of, of, of the scholar. This is the manner of the student of knowledge. They speak to you in a manner that has edab. They are not those who are speaking to you from their car or speaking to you while they're walking around yeah, in the neighborhood or speaking to you while they're laying down inside of a bed or pushed up on some pillows and so on and so forth. And now I want to talk to you about an affair of the religion. This is, this is how you, yeah, you deem the, the religion as being. They don't even have the right to, 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 to sit up properly and in a proper manner, but you're going to speak and you laying and you speak and you relisting and so on and so forth. And that is from the characteristics of how ilm is being disseminated. What, have you ever seen any of the ulama addressing the people and speaking to them and teaching them upon this manner? Now, we're not speaking about those mashaykh and those ulama who have reached such an age where they are on their deathbed or close to death and so on and so forth, and they're still teaching. We're not talking about that. We're talking about young, healthy, grown men. 
who take it upon themselves to speak about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they have nothing with them from knowledge, nothing with them from studying. Uh, admittedly, not scholars, not students of knowledge, but yet they're speaking about affairs of their religion, affairs that affect the general masses of the people, affairs that sometimes involve bloodshed and they have an opinion. The Prophet وسلم, he is the messenger of Allah. He does not speak on his own authority. Whatever he speaks is revelation. The Prophet وسلم, said that this day, these days will come and the likes of these individuals will speak and undoubtedly it will happen and we have seen it already come to pass. So take the advice, the guidance and the guidelines of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and do not give your ear to the likes of these individuals whom it is not, it is not appropriate that they should be paid any attention. But rather the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us to pay them no mind. Pay them no mind. Why? Because they're lowly, given to criminality, and they're not intelligent. So therefore, their opinion is worthless and means nothing to us. We have to benefit ta'ala from the likes of these things and implement them inside of our lives and not take them from the standpoint, just FYI, no. But that we hear and we obey and we implement ta'ala. Again, I thank all of the brothers on the panel for their efforts and what they have put forward this evening and all of those who have tuned in may Allah Ta'ala reward each and every one of you tremendously whatever I said that was correct whatever any of us have said that was correct then it was from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the praise is for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala if there was any mistakes then it was from Myself and all the shaitan ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me and all of the brothers on the panel and all of the listeners. Fa'natafi bihad al qadr wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa jazakumullahu khayra.